everyone out there. Uh, this is a supplementary video for analysis of Mingler 1. I wanted to do between multiplayer sessions. Uh, so what is going on is I wanted to do an analysis of what happened to Mingler 1 in multiplayer. Uh, and as per the rules that we have for our world is we cannot copy in blueprints into the multiplayer session, but you can use them outside for general analysis, so long as I don't uh, try to cheat anything in into single player, which I can't because not an admin or anything like that. So just analysis. So the first thing you may notice is I am on Mingler 1. So it, this is the unedited version from the multiplayer. It even has the battle damage from it landing hard, and it's it still got the piston on the side from its charging. Uh, so what had happened is there is a connector problem, which may or may not have translated on uh, any of our videos, uh, but sometimes it gets stuck in multiplayer for whatever reason. It, even if you disconnect the connector, it will still be stuck. And that's why it didn't take off in the multiplayer session. Uh, so that's, who knows if that's gonna happen again. But unedited, you see, it flies just fine. Uh, so the next thing, is looking at the thrust and power. So it's hard to tell from here, but this will descend over time. Uh, the four thrusters I have are not good enough to keep it afloat. And that means all the other connectors in all the other directions are also not good enough for their various uh, directions. So we started, I started work on a version two of this. Now this is probably not the way it's gonna look in multiplayer, we'll see. I might try something else or who knows. Uh, but I'm just trying to get it functionally working. Uh, another pair of these is good enough to keep it floating, and another pair going forward gives it appropriate thrust. I'm going to need more going the other directions, but just for general testing, this was sufficient. The other thing was power. Uh, it was maxing out its power when flying with four batteries that we had internally. So I added four more to this version of it, and it seemed to be okay. For more crazy acrobatic shenanigans, I found that 12 batteries is necessary, which I have in the version three up there. Uh, so that's what we're gonna have to be looking at. Uh, the next thing was uh, for powering the hydrogen and getting the O2 working inside, it needed a gratuitous amount of ice. And so I ended up having to uh, put a whole lot of ice into this inventory system here. And it was just an obscene amount of ice and it still wasn't enough. So what I found is uh, when we get when it comes time to actually ac acquiring ice for this in multiplayer, I'm gonna have to get it to drill it itself. So I tried it with this one with a hinge block, and this does work. Uh, this hinges down uh, on connection, and then we control the ice. And this can pull hundreds of thousands of of uh, ice uh, for use for the powering, and it, it requires that much. Fortunately, we can hold all that, and there's no problems with it. If we look in here, it's already blown through the ice. Uh, just for the time I started this video and, and beginning it, only had a uh, maybe like 10,000 ice in there at the, at the time, and it's already gone through it. So we're gonna need a silly amount of ice to keep this thing powered. Now, another thing I noticed while I was working with this was the hydrogen. Now you see that the hydrogen tanks have fuel in them at this point, but they weren't when I started. So that was the, the next problem I noticed, is everything is linear on the original version. So from the H2O2 uh, generators, uh, it has to go through here to then go through the uh, assembler and refineries and the various other components back here before it gets to the external piping system that goes to the tanks. So I found that I had to bypass it right here. It goes directly from the cargo container and then goes out to the sides, to the left and the right of the, of the ship. And that will power the hydrogen thrusters, or hydrogen tanks, rather. Uh, the next thing was the uh, airlocks and zero gravity. So after I got the basic stuff working in here, I went to work on uh, the zero gravity material just to see if the internals would work in space. And to my surprise, it works exactly as, as well. So in here, um, while you're floating around and whatnot, uh, it, you can breathe. You can turn your helmet off and yeah, there's no problems with it, as long as these air vents are on. So you can see right there, when the air vents are green, it's good. But when you release it like that, they go yellow. This means you're venting oxygen out this direction. It's another reason why, why this will hemorrhage uh, a lot of the ice into the O2 
is it will be uh, trying to oxygenate the interior of the ship. So it's important to keep everything closed while you're working with it. Um, so the other thing was gravity. So there was a gravity generator, and I found it in multiplayer, or put in a multiplayer, and I had questions whether it was okay with it being in the wall. It's uh, back there, but I have it on the floor now. So I found when you turn your jetpack off, uh, off, you would go flying to the back of the ship. So I had to reverse that, and so too in uh, multiplayer, I'm going to have to rotate that properly. Otherwise, we're going to have problems in that regard. And that is pretty much it. Everything else is was was fine with the ship. I mean, otherwise it's going to be a lot of design work. And that's what I'm going to be spending most of the time, I think, in multiplayer after I adapt all these changes. So yeah, so that's what's going on with this. So look forward to it uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're going, to, going on another adventure of uh, updating Mingler 1 and whatever other silly shenanigans we get into. So hope to see you all then.